Hello and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me. Now in this short lesson, I want to give you a very brief introduction to holding games. I should say that this is a vast and complex area for study and Jacob Stick Rice recently wrote a whole book on the subject of holding games called Holding Game Guru. Now that literally has hundreds of reference positions in. Now for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna introduce you to some of the things you should be thinking about in 20 point holding games. Now I've set up a position here and White has a 15 pip race lead in a money game. So what would be the correct cube action? Now I can tell you that this is a borderline decision, which means it wouldn't be an error for white to double or not to double. Now this borderline decision is called a crossover point. Now that is a term coined by Steve Sachs. And these crossover points are very informative and helpful because we know that if we improve white's position, we are going to be more of a clear double. And if we make the position worse, then we are going to be more of a no double. So we can adjust from the borderline decision, from the reference position. Now, the reason why this is a reference is because we can adjust it to see kind of a threshold. And then we can say, well, if I was playing live and I had a 20 point holding game and my position was worse than this, then I would have a no double. But if my position was better, then I would have a clear double. And if it was much better, maybe my opponent would have a pass or even I could be too good. So top backgammon players, grandmasters, they have a bank of memorized reference positions that they draw upon and recall during a match to help guide them towards making the best decision. And of course they do make fewer errors and blunders because they have memorized many reference positions and holding games do come up very frequently. So certainly remembering reference positions like the one I'm showing you now will certainly help improve your game and guide you towards hopefully making a better decision over the board. Now XG is a great asset for playing holding games because you can manipulate the position. You can change the parameters, moving checkers around to see that how that influences cube action. Now, for instance, if white now had the bar point made in addition to the eight and the midpoint, we can see that this would now be a very clear double, but the borderline decision would now be between the take and the pass for green. So it wouldn't be an error either way for green to take or pass. So again, another useful reference position. Now here, going back to the original position, we can ask ourselves, well, why is this a borderline decision where the other option I just showed you with the bar point made is a clear double. And now we get into the value of holding games. Now the value of holding games is in contact value. Now green's 20 point anchor, the golden point is holding our two points in the outfield. Now that means that when we start to clear these points, unless we roll a double, we are going to face some difficulty. We may roll awkwardly, and we may be forced to leave a shot and green may hit us and then contain us behind his prime and even recube us back. So green is holding these points waiting here for us to roll awkwardly. And I'm sure if you played enough backgammon, you've seen how often that indeed is the case. Now with this point made, the bar point, now as white, we have more safety we can use the seven and eight points as a landing strip to bring these checkers off the mid easier. And that's also why it becomes the decision between a take and a pass, a crossover point. Also, we have some prime value here and green is penned in behind a three prime. So that also kind of makes a difference. So here with the bar point made, 
it does make a significant difference in these positions. Now we can really see the value of the holding game when we put together a position like this. Now here, white has a huge race lead of 37 pips. But here in this position, it would be a monster error, blunder to pass. Here, green, even though there is a big race deficit, still has a very easy take. And that's because green is holding the point six away. So this means any six that we roll as white besides double six, we're going to be forced to clear this point and give green 17 shots in return. So if we move these two checkers closer, so now sixes play much better as white, we can see again how that influences the decision. So let me just put that on plus plus because it's very close. So now it becomes a borderline decision again on whether green should take or pass. So here with the point six away, green is holding that point much more effectively than this point. Now what makes holding games particularly tricky is it draws upon a range of other backgammon concepts. Now one of those is timing. Now in a holding game, green wants to hold this point for as long as possible, which means he needs checkers to play forward without destroying his home board. Now here we can see that green has three checkers in the outfield, which over the next couple of rolls, he can play forward, even strengthening his home board in the process. So that means over those same few rolls, we as white are going to have to bring these down and green can stick around hoping for a shot, unless of course he rolls a big double. Now if green's checkers weren't in the outfield and were further forward, then green's timing would be decreased, but then of course the race would be much closer and you'd have to weigh up those different values against one another to help decide whether it's a take or pass or whether even it's a double or a no double and certainly flexibility is another key area so as we saw before when white had the point six away white had very poor flexibility which meant that with any six he was going to have to break that point with 10 rolls so many concepts such as timing and flexibility all kind of come into play into confluence in these holding game position types now we can also make other adjustments so here you know from where we started that this is a borderline double no double now, if we moved Green's anchor to the four point, so he had a 21 point holding game, it would still be a borderline decision. If we moved Green's anchor to the 22 point holding game, still a borderline decision. Only when we move Green's anchor to the two point of a 23 point holding game, it becomes a big pass. Because of course then, as we can see, Green is also primed in and we have the blocking point six away. Now we can also make adjustments to our opponent's home board. So here we can see that green has a four point home board. Now what if he only had a three point home board? What now? So now the decision is it's a clear double and a clear take. In fact, a blunder to pass this. Now what with a two point home board? So now the decision is close, so we run it on a higher setting. So now it becomes a pass with a two point home board for green in a 20 point holding game. However, if we were to adjust the race and make the difference only 25 pips, then it would become a borderline decision on whether green could take or pass. So again, many adjustments you can make to these positions to really help guide you towards making the best play 
And I just wanted to leave you with something that Mochi said, and that is when your opponent has the 20 point holding game, you need about a 12% race advantage to offer a double. If green had our bar point made instead, we would then need a 10% race advantage to offer the cube, so slightly less. So by XG, play around with these positions, see what comes up, give white a five point home board instead of a four point home board, move these points around in the outfield, give green a spare checker on the 20 point, see how this will influence holding game decisions. You can spend hours and hours on this and I do recommend it because as I said, they come up very frequently and certainly some ideas around key concepts such as flexibility and timing are very crucial to help guiding you towards making the right decision. So thank you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe and see you next Wednesday. Goodbye.